Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna be talking about the week ahead. And I'm a little late with this video because yesterday was Christmas and the day before that was Christmas Eve. But there's a few things that I wanted to talk about but it should be pretty easy and effortless for me to get this message out and what I see within the chart and what's showing up within the cards. But I wanted to put it up versus me not putting it up, even though it is Wednesday already. So I hope that the holidays have been good for you. I hope that you're feeling good, that you're in a positive space. And that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing that is really sticking out to me and standing out to me is, I don't want to say that there's this energy of confusion and cloudiness, but this is something that I've been seeing all of last week, all of the week before, and I just keep getting this visualization and even the cards are kind of supporting it. I, I pulled some, I pulled the chart first, but then I gravitated over to Flowers from the Dead Oracle deck, which I don't know if you guys know this about me yet. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I've been seeing a lot of growth lately, but for those of you guys that are old friends to the channel and have been with me since day one, you've heard me mention Flowers from the Dead, the Oracle deck, and it really, it's one of the few decks that I resonate with and that I gravitated towards immediately and that I always keep on me, I always travel with. In fact, there were a select few cards that I pulled at, or took with me as I came to New Orleans because I was focusing on the bare minimum and that was one of the decks that just, you know, was my ride or die. So yeah, um, I pulled the chart first and then the second thing that I went with was the Flowers from the Dead Oracle and one of the cards that jumped up was Confusion, Misunderstood and Truth and Clarity with the hawk and the alligator gar. Now it's so interesting because it really emphasizes to me even more what it is that I'm seeing within this chart. And other astrologers right now at this point in time when when Mercury is moving through the sign of Sagittarius and Jupiter is moving through the sign of Sagittarius, we're, we're focusing so much, the astrology community is focusing so much on looking at the great the grand scale of things and looking at things from a bigger picture and that's true that's very accurate but at the same time as i'm looking at the chart mercury is still moving out of a square with neptune neptune is the planet of illusion and fantasy and also deception now neptune gets oh, the worst reputation always because there's positives and negatives to every single sign or to every single sign and every single planet but what's what i've noticed is that there's some planets that just get a hard to totally bad reputation, Uranus, Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune being the major ones. So, and then the planets that, you know, um, could create a lot of positive things or could create a lot of disruption, you know, they get, they get a bad reputation as well, such as, for example, like when Mercury goes retrograde, everyone thinks that's the worst. When there's blessings and there's, you know, complications in everything, there's always the good and the bad, the shadow and the light and if you know how to work with it then you know how to work with it versus becoming a victim to it so and that's something that i want for every person that tunes into my channel is that you're getting accurate information that you're learning how you could see the the pitfall you can see what can you can succumb succumb to but because you're educated because you're informed and you know how to work your personal power you don't fall victim to it in fact you make it work for you so that being said um, Neptune moving through the sign of Pisces and Mercury moving out of this square with Neptune, I'm sorry, with Pisces is still creating, I'm sorry, with Neptune. See, this is me <laughs> falling under the influence of this right now. But this is emphasizing even for even more what it is that I've been seeing, what I'm noticing is it just seems like, you know, what things are and how they seem, our perspective of it and our ability to communicate and to formulate and to organize our thoughts, as much as the the intention is there and as much as the potential is there, it's still, it, we still kind of need to relax. And I, I, I almost feel like as I've been saying this, people are hearing me say this and 50% of you guys are still pushing forward and still trying to force things, I can't tell you how much of a mistake that is and how much you really kind of want to relax. And at the end of the day, you're going to, you know, do what it is that you need to do for you, whatever it is that feels right for you. But I just want to make sure that the decisions that you're making, that you're listening to your intuition and you're not always following your logic. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes something that makes sense 
something that should make sense and that should be the right move, the right decision, you have to check in with your gut. You have to listen to your heart. You have to listen to your intuition to make sure that that decision, this conversation, this reaction that you're having is something that you should react on. And I hope that that makes sense because, you know, sometimes, again, it, something could logically make sense. It could all on paper, it sounds right, it should be right, but the signs, the signs around you, within you, are telling you to hold off and to wait. And that's what I'm seeing within this astrology chart. Now, this isn't easy for everyone, and myself included, because I'm a person who likes to go. I like to be organized, I like to know the path, I like to know what's next, but as I'm looking at the chart, and as I look at you know, intuitively what's going on within me and how I've been feeling and how I've been feeling in it within really matches what's been going on with the, what the charts are. And at the end of the day, I have to respect and honor, you know, what the universe and what the cosmos are suggesting is the right next move versus me forcing and pushing my will and asserting my will. There will come a time, and actually it's interesting because January 1st, Interestingly enough, that's the start of the new year, at least in the US, you know, 2019. But there's gonna come a time when Mars moves into the sign of Aries, and that's when we can go ahead and start revving those engines and getting things to the next level, and that's when you can assert yourself. But for right now, there's too much within the chart that is suggesting that you really should not be forcing your will when, ev when there's signs around you that are suggesting that what you wanna do is you wanna relax, you wanna coast, you wanna be easy, and you wanna ground yourself. And I just, I've been saying that for the last two to three weeks, even people that I work with, with, with um, Bahati Life, I see them forcing and pushing and I keep reminding them, look, you know what, there's only so much that we can do. Don't push it, don't force it, don't fight it. There's a reason why we're being asked to coast right now. There's a reason why we're being asked to, to you know, follow our, follow our intuition and allow sometimes gravity to pull you because that will put you at the right place at the right time. The other thing is that when the timing is right, you will feel it and you need all the, your energy, you need all your focus, you need all your clarity in that moment in order to take it to the next level versus you pushing and forcing your will now and, and exhausting yourself. So that's something that I'm seeing here. Um, the other thing is, on the 25th, now this passed, this was yesterday, but we're still under the influence of it now. Mercury is still moving through the sign of Sagittarius. It wants to think big. It says things. It says things loud. It sa says things boldly. It's a great time to connect with new people. It's a great time to connect with friends, different people, different cultures, different of people, lifestyles, different of people, people of different backgrounds that bring a different perspective to you. But the thing is, is that on this day, you know, there's a, there's the potential and this week there's the potential for miscommunication again this is because mercury and neptune are squaring off and again neptune creates this you know what it looks like is not exactly what it is what you hear is not exactly what the intent was behind that person saying it so you just want to be careful and mindful of that and for some reason the card of sacrifice came through and forgiveness again this is from flowers from the dead so this is, um, again, if someone says something to you, and then there are other cards that came through that I want you to be able to see. The Page of Swords came through, the Page of Pentacles came through, the Knight of Cups came through, and also the additional card of mis like miscommunication, things not being clear, the Seven of Cups. So that's showing me, these are all messenger cards. These are all cards that bring messages with them, always. Anytime you see the page, the pages are the knights. You have some type of message that's coming through, some type of proposal. Something is actually on the way coming through, especially when you see it paired up with something like the Eight of Wands. Now, for those of you guys that are studying the tarot, the Sacred Circle Tarot School is open, and you can see the details for that within on my website. But um, if you want to study and dive into the tarot even more, then you can go ahead and sign up for those classes. And we're all, you know, this, a new semester just started and we're still moving through the tarot, all of us together. And it's an exclusive group and exclusive community for those of you guys that are interested in that. But one of the things that we do, we were talking about in there is the fact that these cards are so 100% messengers of the tarot. Um, because they're bringing information, they're bringing news, they're bringing, you know, feelings, especially with the Knight of Cups, the Page of Swords, the Page of um, Pentacles, 
And when the Page of Swords, when I originally pulled this card, it was reversed. And that shows me again that you really want to fact check. You want to check the facts. You want to listen to, you know, it almost seems like asking for advice. It almost, that's what I'm getting when I'm looking at this card. It's going to a guru and asking them for advice and asking them for their opinion, listening to it and allowing yourself to digest it before you make a decision. In fact, that was one thing that I wrote down as I was pulling the cards. And as I was pulling the chart, which intuitively came to me, which is what feels right, like what feels secure, what makes you feel whole, especially as the North Node is in the sign of cancer this week, we're really focusing on, and the North Node is where we're getting pulled. The North Node is where the greatest lessons, you know, for us in this moment where we're striving to go to, that's what we need to look for. That's our North Star. So, and cancer is all about family, security, upbringing, your roots, your ability to feel stable, your ability to feel safe and supported. And that's what we need to focus on right now. And with that, cancer also rules emotion in the stomach and the gut and the breast. So it's like sitting there for that moment, hearing what is coming in. And what I wrote down was absorb it, feel it, digest it. How does it make you feel when you digest it? Instead of you gobbling these things in and gobbling these things down and forcing yourself to, you know, consume, to consume and to react and to do, it's more, you know, taking a moment to pause, taking a few moments to pause and to see how it makes you feel first before you commit to it. The Page of Pentacles also showed up, which is the start of forever. It's the start of building lasting longevity. And it really wants to invest. The sun moving through the sign of Capricorn is all about investing and thinking about the future of the long haul because Capricorn wants to develop, you know, security for itself. It wants to develop um, something. <laughs> Sorry, God bless me. <laughs> it wants to develop, um, you know, long, long lasting, uh, you know, something that you can give back for generations and generations and generations to come. And directly opposite opposite of that is the sign of cancer, which is how you are supported in this life in order for what how you're able to give back, how the legacy that you're able to live and to leave. And then also, you know, contribute. Like what is it that you're able to contribute? So yeah, so and that's your name, your vision, like how people see you, how people um like your your reputation in a lot of ways. And without you having a strong support system and you without you having, whether that come from you feeling self-sufficient and self-secure and confident within yourself, that's something that comes from within. How can you go and build something, you know, lasting if you're, if you yourself are fragmented, if you yourself, you know, can't commit. So, and that's relationships, that's work, that's everything, your health, your longevity, everything. If you are not right within, then you can't give, you know, to the world, you can't build something, you know, um, and feel good about it too. So, and this is all about leadership and control and power. Why is this? Because Pluto and Saturn, both um, Saturn connecting to uh, control and your ability to build things up and Pluto ruling our ability to manipulate the forces in a good way. You know, do you use your, your power for good or do you use it for ill? Do you use it to build up or do you use it to break down things within yourself? So. All of these issues are coming to play and they all come from the same root of how are you emotionally feeling? What feels right for you? So, and all of this all comes together and ask and ask you to say, okay, is what is it that you're building? Like at least begin to, to know what it is that you want. Mars moving through the sign of, of Pisces has been drifting for the last few weeks. Mars is our ability to act, our ability to push forward. And when Mars is moving to the sign of Pisces, this is not direct, this is not aggressive, this is more feeling, this is more in, in, intuition, this is allow your, allowing yourself to kind of drift. This is not easy for those of us who are very assertive and very focused on what it is that we want to achieve and what it is that we want to accomplish. And when we have a goal, we wanna focus on it, we wanna to work towards it. I was working with someone really awesome in, in New Orleans and this person, I'm not gonna name any names for privacy. I, I keep all of my clients pretty private, no matter how important they are. Or, I mean, all of you guys are important, but no matter what their social status is. But this person has a goal that it is that they're working on and you can see them light up when they're talking about it. And they want to push forward and I understand that 100%. 
but right now it's almost like we were doing a lot of spiritual work right now in order to prepare for the, uh, the two of us together. We're doing spiritual work now to prepare for what is going to create concrete the foundations for this foundation for this business thing that they're working on and I could see the potential of this business and why it needs to, the importance of it taking off the ground and the importance of that person meeting with the right people at the right time and those people being in positions of incredible power and how intimidating that might be and that's all Capricorn energy that we're talking about but before we could get to materialization like that thing materializing and that thing us taking it off the ground or this person and I say us because I'm his spiritual worker like I'm reading his chart I'm helping him to you know create the right plan um, in order to work with the strengths and the weaknesses and to do it at the right time the right moment and how to do it how to approach it in order to get this project lifted off because it's so important but in order for us in order for him to take it from this seed and take it to actual you know, materializing it and creating something of substance that is going to build for past his lifetime, past my lifetime. It's so important that he does this. We're doing the spiritual work now in order to intuitively understand and reveal the path and what that's going to look like and what we'll need in order to take this to the next level. Me as his spiritual work, supporting him and him doing the work and making those connections because that's his work. That's what he needs to do. So that's why we, how we were working together, but that's what I was seeing within the chart, and that's a perfect example for what it is that I'm seeing, which is do the spirit the spirit work now, which means follow your intuition, consult your guides, consult um, the divine, intuitively listen to your your gut right now without reacting, because the chance, the time to react is coming, but right now you're doing the spirit work, the spiritual work in order to prepare for what you know, the next few weeks, the next week. It's sooner rather than later. 2019 is going to totally be ignite, like ignite left and right. We're gonna see this in our global, in our like global politics. We're gonna see it in the world, but you're gonna see this within yourself. You're gonna see this around you, within your world. But for right now, this, you, what you need to focus on is not pushing too soon. What we're, fo what we're focusing on now is really connecting with our intuition. There's a few other cards that came through the borderland, which um, suggests hidden realms opening up, which means that there's some things, not everything is always physical, like in the now. <clears throat> there's energy, there's things unseen that are happening um, behind, behind the scenes. And that's what I'm seeing opening up. And again, it seems confusing, it seems cloudy. How it appears is not what it is because there's more behind that veil. And it reminds me almost of the high priestess. The high priestess is the one who protects that knowledge, understands that there's something going on behind the scenes, and she will reveal the, the pieces that she's allowed to reveal. And I kind of feel like, you know, the similarities between her and I at this point in time within the astrology chart. So I hope that that makes sense. One last thing, uh, the 28th should be a really good day to go on a date or to connect with people that you like or love whether it be friends or someone that you have a crush on or to deepen a connection within a current relationship. This is because Venus, the planet of love, beauty, romance, aesthetic, values, money, is moving to the side of Scorpio and she's going to meet with Pluto. And the two of them together, I love when Venus meets with Pluto because it really creates this awesome dynamic between the two of them that's really intense and undeniable, especially when Venus is moving to the sign of Scorpio. Again, it's following your intuition, like what are you attracted to? Sometimes it's almost, I don't say lustful, but you know, what are you physically drawn to? What is it pulling you? It's almost like a moth to a flame. And sometimes there's something there, but I'm just seeing that what it is that you're getting pulled to and what it is that you're being attracted to actually has some, some strong potential to it and give it a chance. You know what I mean? So what is it that is kind of enticing you a little bit? Give it a chance because again, the planets right now are suggesting that you have an open mind. So many of us will say no to something first before we even understand it because logically or realistically it doesn't make sense for us to like it. This is how our government is and how, you know, if you look at the Hierophant, it's like the ways of this is what, how we've been doing it. You know, we don't really deviate from this because this is how we've been doing it. But in your own life, in your personal life, sometimes you have to do things a little different 
in order to experience something different that you may have never experienced before and there's no such thing as perfect so um, you know you may make a mistake it may be the best thing that's ever happened to you but the only way to do it is by to try it out and to see how it feels and to give it a shot so that's what I'm seeing when, when looking within the chart is to kind of allow yourself to be enticed a little bit it's okay you know so anyways that's what it is that I'm seeing that's what it is that I'm feeling intuitively what's within the charts and also what's you know showing up within the cards I hope that, that makes sense to you guys let me know how you are feeling with these transits it, down in the comments. Of course, I read all of them and I comment as many as I can. But until then, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. I hope you're doing well and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye.